Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Ray and I thought I would hop on here really quick and give you guys a quick update on some recent pet food recalls. Um, this one was issued on May 18th, 2024 by the FDA. Um, we're going to get into the recall on this particular product um, right in a few minutes, but I wanted to just give a quick um, introduction to my feelings on recalls and recent drama regarding um, pet food safety. You will have noticed if you have been a member of my Nutrition Nation for any period of time that I have not commented or taken part in the Purina pet food scare. And the reason being is there has not been any official data released or any official recall information released. And so I definitely um, take into consideration and take um, a you know, specific interest in the health and well-being of pets. Obviously, I'm a veterinarian. Um, and so when pet food recalls come across, we look into them, we notify our clients, we notify um, whoever needs to be notified, and we take care of them. What I don't take participation in is um, gossip or drama or scares that have no um, relevant data or no um, information to back that up that is substantial. And so certainly I do think all across America, every day of the week, across the country, across the world, across everywhere, there are pets that get sick. And there are a lot of times pets that get sick and there is no reason, at least there is no reason that is readily available to maybe the owner or um, even to medical professionals. And um, people through that heartache will reach out to whatever they um, can just make, you know, just make anything work. You know, they want reasons, they want answers, they're in grief, and they just make something work. And I see it all the time with medications. Um, I see it all the time with vaccines. I see it all the time with all kinds of um, procedures where the procedure didn't, you know, necessarily cause the problem or the medication didn't or the timeline's not there, but the people just want to grasp at something. And so they want someone to blame and they want something to blame in a, in a moment of their grief. And I think a lot of that is what has happened through the Purina Pet Food Scare. Um, and so you'll see that I have, I have not mentioned that or commented on that because I had been waiting for the data, the information to be released before I made a you know public comment on it. I'll be honest, I have not had one single one of my particular clients even ask me about it. And so that just shows you a lot of this is regional and a lot of this is in particular circles. And you guys all know what those circles are and where that information is coming from. And I just chose not to participate in it. Um, when the time comes, if the time comes that actual data is there that I can present to you, then I'll do that. But I, you know, I don't like to give you guys information that I can't back up. And right now, as far as the Purina scare goes, there have not, you know, there has not been any information released. Uh, so that's to cover that in case you guys came to this video thinking that's what I was going to be commenting on. What I'm actually going to be commenting on is a real pet food recall um, that has to do with another major company. And I want to walk you through how these recalls are done and the way that you can know whether or not it's a scare or a true recall and where you can go to get the information and then do what is necessary um, and then get over it. I don't think that it's important to dwell on recalls. Um, they happen. Um, it's how the company responds to them and how often they happen. So if a company is repeatedly having recalls, then no, that's not good. If a company has a recall and they deal with it appropriately and they put measures in place and that particular type of recall never happens again um, or doesn't happen for a very, 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 very long time, then I'm not going to limit um, I'm not going to limit what I have to offer, especially if what that company is offering may be what's best for my pet. Um, so that's kind of a, my feeling on recalls in general. I don't blacklist a company just because they've had a recall that was handled hopefully appropriately. Now, if it was a company that had a recall that was handled the way I thought inappropriately, that would be another, that would be another um, situation. And so I want to you, I want to direct everyone to www.fda.gov and backslash safety backslash recalls dash market dash withdrawals dash safety dash alerts. You can also just go to Google and put FDA recalls. When you go to that website, you are going to find this page. And what you want to do is you want to type in here or scroll down in here to the animal and veterinary. Now, obviously, you can research any recall you want on this website uh, and then, you know, not related to veterinary, but that's what we're going to be focusing on today. 
when you get to this website, you will see all of the recalls that are recent, the date, um, you know, a brief description of what it is, the company that is involved with it, et cetera, et cetera. It also tells you when um, it has been resolved. Okay. So the one that I'm talking about today is right here. It's issued um, May 18th, 2024. So you can see here, this is um, what we'll bring up. It'll be the official statement. And this is for Pedigree by Mars Pet Care. They are volunteering, recalling 315 bags of Pedigree, adult complete nutrition, the grilled steak and vegetable flavored dry dog food, specifically the 44 pound bag. So you can see they're very specific about being re what is being recalled. It is not wishy-washy. It is not all the foods in the Mars line. Um, it is not um, all the foods from a specific um, genre or anything like that. They're very specifically saying it is the 44-pound bag of this Pedigree Adult Complete Nutrition steak. And so you can see how that contrasts to some of the drama that has ensued with Purina. Um, and, you know, which food was it? I don't know. Purina makes a million foods. They make Purina 1. They make Purina Pro Plan. They make dog chow, um, you know, and then some other you know, foods I saw, um, you know, got tacked on there as well. Had nothing to do with Purina. So this is a very important aspect, very specific to the company. Then we're going to go down into the summary, and this is the official company announcement came out on May 17th, and then the FDA went ahead and picked it up and published on May 18th. You have the product type, which is um, animal and veterinary, food and beverages. The reason for the announcement um, is specifically the potential of the presence of metal, metal particles um, in the food. So again, not wishy-washy, just causing illness, just causing general malaise, some dogs are dying. No, very specific. They are recalling this food because they detected the potential presence of medical metal particles and they are taking care of it. The company again is Mars Pet Food. It is very specific down to the brand that's going to be pedigree and then they list this the the exact name of the package that is being affected. Um, after that, we'll scroll down and we'll look at the official company announcement. Um, this again was released on May 17th by Mars Pet Care, and they are saying that they're recalling voluntarily the 315 bags of that particular pedigree food, the 44 pound bag only, due to the potential presence of loose metal particle pieces in the bag. Now, I want to comment on that just because I do actually have some specific um, it, information to give you guys. A long, long time ago, almost 10 years ago, I had the opportunity to um, do a, a tour of a pet food um, company, um, major pet food company. And so I had the interest in that. And so I went ahead and I agreed to do the tour. And when I got there, I had to take off uh, my rings, my jewelry, my earrings. Um, I even had to take off my glasses or wear a specific cover um, over my glasses because of the metal screws in my glasses. I had to wear a full um, bodysuit. And if I can find the picture of it, I'm sure I have it somewhere. I'll insert it here, head to toe wearing this bunny suit. Um, in order to enter and, and tour the plant because of this very um, concern. And so companies do have on their radar that these things can happen. And sometimes even despite your best efforts, this can this can occur. And so it could have been as simple as an employee said, oh my gosh, when I got home, I'm missing my earring. Um, you know, maybe they weren't supposed to be wearing it or whatever. And the company said, hold the phone. And when was this employee working? What bags were produced? And we're going to go and we're going to issue a recall because we don't want this to get any further and we don't want any animals to get hurt. And so that's what is very important to know about recalls. They're very specific and the companies do extensive, extensive research to make sure that um, they, you know, that they get this taken care of in a very um, timely and efficient manner so that, you know, nothing, nothing bad happens. And so they go ahead and they let you know um, that you need to specifically be looking for this lot code here um, and that the variety is limited just to those 315 bags that were specifically sold by Walmart in Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Texas. So if you don't live in those areas, you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be panicked. You don't have to be changing your dog's diet, et cetera, et cetera. They know where the problem happened and they're letting you know and they're taking care of it. And so um, you have to be looking um, for your best buy date. That's going to be March 4th, 2005. You need to be looking for that lot number, which is uh, 410B2TX. T02. And then they go even further um, to show you a specific picture of the package. So if you are not sure, 
if you you know are purchased that specific product there it is it is the um, classic you know pedigree package and then they go even further to show you look this is where you need to look on the back this is where the lot code is going to be displayed so if you have that what do you do well obviously immediately you stop feeding the food and if you think that your pet may have um, developed a you know, issue or your pet did consume the food, you need to go ahead and contact your veterinarian and then they will help you, um, you know, go further. If you have it and you just purchased this bag, well, what do you need to do? You need to not feed it or stop feeding it immediately and you need to contact your customer support because they want to help you. And so you need to call that 1-800 number and you need to get on that website. And you need to report the problem. Um, they even um, want you to know that there were no other pedigree or Mars products affected or being recalled. And so when these recalls happen, you better believe that they are deep, you know, deep cleaning and deep scrubbing and making sure that they get this problem under control. And so um, they were very specific to uh, follow the chain and they know that it was any of these particular Walmarts and they're working with Walmart to pull the product from the shelf and, you know, ensure that no other pets are um, potentially harmed or that this thing gets any further, any out of control um, than those 315 uh, bags that were affected. And so there you go. That's how you can um, not let fear get the best of you. You can look at these things very logically. Um, you can follow this channel. You can um, subscribe to the USDA recall alert um, on their webpage and you can stay informed. Um, but you don't let, you don't need to let fear take a hold of you. Um, we are not um, looking at this as a glass half empty type of thing. We're looking this, looking at this as, um, you know, Pedigree makes millions and millions and millions of bags of food. And they were able to um, narrow something down to 315 bags out of those millions, intervene, um, take care of the problem, pull them from market before any animals got sick. And so that is how recalls work. Um, and so we are not saying that P P Pedigree is a bad company. We're saying, good job, Pedigree. You found this problem before anybody was injured and you took care of it. And so I think that's the important take home message um, to really look at with a lot of pet food companies. Um, and when recalls occur, not to immediately blacklist a company. Let's look at what was the recall. Why did the recall happen? How did the company um, respond to it? And, you know, move on and go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, feel free to like and subscribe, ring the bell. And um, next time there's a recall, if you ring the bell, you will get a notification. And um, you can check out, you know, what it's about with me. So we'll talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed. And um, yeah, enjoy your Saturday.